in the first letter to the Thessalonians, St. Paul declared to the early Christians and to all of us, this is the will of God, your holiness. Holiness is not a hobby reserved to an elite group of Christians. It's at the center of Christianity. Holiness means participating through Christ in the Blessed Trinity's own life. It is an increasing union in love of our will and God's will. Holiness is God's gift, but he asks for our cooperation. St. John Paul II developed this theme in his apostolic letter, Novo Millennio Ineunte, which he wrote at the close of the great jubilee of the year 2000 as a kind of coordinate for the church's mission in the new millennium. In the section of that letter entitled, Starting Afresh from Christ, he stated that all Christians need a training in holiness and that prayer is the key element in holiness. Prayer, St. John Paul II says, develops that conversation with Christ that makes us his intimate friends. In this wonderful reciprocity, we listen and we speak. We are loved and we love. He reminds us, wrought in us by the Holy Spirit, this reciprocity opens us through Christ and in Christ to contemplation of the Father's face. Learning this Trinitarian shape of Christian prayer and living it fully is the secret of a truly vital Christianity, which has no reason to fear the future because it returns continually to the sources and finds in them new life. When St. John Paul II makes a recommendation about prayer, it's a good idea to listen. So what is this Trinitarian shape of prayer that we're called to learn? And how can we enter more deeply into it? It flows from our baptism. At baptism, we become, in Christ, beloved sons and daughters of the Father through the Holy Spirit. And thus, Trinitarian prayer means that our prayer is directed towards the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit. These aren't three different kinds of prayer. Rather, it's more like they're three facets of the one diamond of prayer. Let's unpack that. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that you sent me. When his soul was torn apart with suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus turned to his Father. During his agony on Calvary, Jesus turned to his Father. Through Christ, we too can pray to the Father. Jesus came to reveal the Father's love, to actually give us that love. St. Charles de Foucault has a beautiful prayer to the Father that sums all of this up and shows us just how intimately we can relate to our Heavenly Father. Father, I abandon myself into your hands. Do with me what you will. Whatever you may do, I thank you. I am ready for all. I accept all. Let only your will be done in me and in all your creatures. I wish no more than this, O Lord. Into your hands I commend my soul. I offer it to you with all the love of my heart. For I love you, Lord, and so need to give myself to surrender myself into your hands without reserve and with boundless confidence, for you are my Father. The second element in the Trinitarian shape of prayer is praying through Christ. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the bridge between heaven and earth. We can only pray to the Father through him. And we have the immense confidence of knowing that he is praying for us. 
since he lives to make intercession for us, as the letter to the Hebrews puts it. Sometimes we can put the whole burden of prayer on ourselves, and we can forget what St. John Paul II calls the primacy of grace. Prayer is God's gift. He asks that we create the space, that we carve out the time, but prayer is his initiative. Christ wants to spend time with us in prayer. He wants to teach us to pray as he taught the apostles to pray. He wants to teach us to pray as he taught St. John Paul II and so many friends of God over the centuries how to pray. He wants to bring us to the Father. The third element of the Trinitarian shape of our prayer is prayer in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the bond of love between the Father and the Son. In the words of St. John Paul II, the Holy Spirit is person gift, and he is given to us at our baptism. As St. Paul puts it, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. As we become more familiar with the Trinitarian shape of prayer, we come to realize that there is a beautiful unity to prayer. The Father sends us the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Son reveals the Father to us and sends us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sent to us as person gift, and he makes present in our souls the Father and the Son. And so our entire lives gradually become a hymn of praise to the Blessed Trinity, in whose image we are created and by whose love we have been redeemed. Since a picture speaks a thousand words, now let's look at one of the most famous depictions of the Trinity in the history of art, Andrei Rublev's Trinity Icon, to glean some of the lessons it contains about the Trinitarian shape of prayer. The icon dates from early 15th century Russia and depicts the Theophany at Mamre, which we contemplated in the second meditation. It exemplifies several of the themes we've seen in this retreat and helps us grasp how our prayer participates in the Blessed Trinity's eternal dialogue of love. The three figures are distinct, yet the faces are identical. Rublev thus points out that the three persons in the Blessed Trinity are one God. The Father is on our left, gazing into the Son's face. His inner garment is blue, symbolizing divinity. His outer garments are a mysterious color, indicating that no one has ever seen the Father. The only begotten Son, who is in the heart of that Father, has made him known. The Son is seated in the middle and returns the Father's loving gaze. His garments are blue and brownish red, symbolizing divinity and humanity. His right hand is pointed towards the third figure, the Holy Spirit, who is depicted in blue and green garments, signifying divinity and new life. In the background, we see Abraham's tent behind the Father. The Father is the Creator. The Oak of Mamre, which also symbolizes the cross, is behind the Son, the Redeemer. And the indistinct hill behind the Holy Spirit indicates that the Spirit leads us up the mountain of holiness. The look between the Father and the Son is full of reverence and wonder at the beauty and goodness of the other, but it's also fully open to the third, the Holy Spirit. The Father's eyes and his body are inclined towards the Holy Spirit, and the Son's hand and the position of his knees point towards the Holy Spirit. Love is always a pouring out for another. Prayer is a living conversation between us and the Blessed Trinity. It's not just an exchange of ideas. It's an exchange of persons. We give ourselves to God, and God gives himself to us. 
Prayer demands trust from us. And as we enter into it, our trust grows. The three figures in this icon exemplify trust. There's a sense of peace. The Son and the Spirit know they're loved by the Father, and they return His love. The trusting words that we speak in our own prayer are inspired by the Holy Spirit, and through Christ, they reach the Father. Sometimes these words are filled with consolation, and other times they may be more like Christ's own, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The important thing is that we share them with God. Love seeks union with the beloved, and so prayer is also mission. The dialogue of love between the three persons extends towards us. In fact, mission actually means to be sent. The Holy Spirit's outward pointing staff signifies that he is given to us, and the Paschal Lamb on the table reminds us that the Son became man and died to redeem us from our sins and bring us into union with the Father. In the same way, our own prayer must lead us to mission. Here are a few ideas to help us grow in holiness through the Trinitarian shape of our prayer. The Mass renews the sacrifice of human redemption. In the Mass, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we offer Christ's sacrifice on the cross to the Father. And so the Mass is the greatest Trinitarian prayer of all. Let's renew our commitment to prepare well for Sunday Mass by praying with the readings beforehand, for example, and arriving early. All our prayer is prayer in the Holy Spirit. And yet, we may not be particularly aware of his presence. In fact, Pope Benedict XVI said that for many Christians, the Holy Spirit is still the great unknown. How can our prayer in the Holy Spirit grow? First of all, by asking for it. St. John Paul II used to pray for an increase of the gifts of the Holy Spirit each morning. The Catechism of the Catholic Church offers a good explanation of these gifts. During the day, it's vital to have the simple prayer, Come, Holy Spirit, in our heart and on our lips before important decisions or in tricky situations. The Holy Spirit doesn't want us to just wing it. He wants to be our trusted guide. The second way to grow in our prayer in the Holy Spirit is by welcoming his inspirations. As St. Paul admonishes us, do not quench the Spirit. Every time we're inspired to love more, to be kind, to pray, or to go out of our way for someone else, it's vital that we accept that inspiration and act on it. St. Francis de Sales encouraged all lay Catholics to pray at least part of the Liturgy of the Hours. This is the official prayer of the Church to her Bridegroom, Christ, in the Holy Spirit, and with Christ to the Father. Accepting the Mass, no prayer is more powerful. The Magnificat magazine is a good introduction to the Liturgy of the Hours, since it breaks it down into simple sections. A pervasive activist mentality can insinuate that prayer is a waste of time. Actually, it's the most important thing we can do. As we grow in our union with the Blessed Trinity, we enter more deeply into that dynamic relationship of love. And since love always goes outside of itself, a virtuous cycle is formed. Our prayer becomes a mission, and our mission becomes a prayer. In the end, our mission is faithfulness to the vocation to which the Lord has called each of us. And within that calling, the Holy Spirit will show us how we can share the tremendous gift of friendship with Christ. He will show us how we are to reveal Christ's kingship and invite others to follow him on the path to life with the Father in the Spirit.
This retreat draws to a close, but our relationship with the Blessed Trinity can always grow. As we deepen in the Trinitarian shape of our prayer, we become ever more radiant witnesses to the God who is love, and we help bring that love into the world in new and wonderful ways. The following personal questionnaire may help you discern what attitudes and practical resolutions our Lord may be inspiring 